E.T. has your exclusive pass inside Cheers Last Party as cast and fans gather for one final toast. Plus, spend the day with Sly Stallone to see how he hypes his new film on the next Entertainment Tonight. Tomorrow night at 7 on KYW3. A teen love affair tragedy. Oh, I know. I'm sorry for what I've done. That's a terrible thing. Too young to love on the next hard copy. Tomorrow at 7.30 on KYW3. This is KYW-TV, Philadelphia. This is the news tonight with Jennifer Ward and Bruce Hamilton. First weather with David Rogers and Yuki Washington on sports. And now, the news tonight. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Bruce Hamilton. And I'm Jennifer Ward. Our top story tonight, an unexpected development in the case of the Bad Samaritan. A tip caller to KYW3 News provides police with perhaps their biggest clue yet. KYW3's Joyce Evans has the exclusive. The caller says he knows who attacked and robbed a driver after an accident in Philadelphia this week. Because I got tired of it. Somebody would get hurt. It could be somebody in my family. This man, we'll call Robert, came forward tonight to help police catch the person he says was behind the Tuesday night robbing and beating of a distressed motorist who had just narrowly escaped a 50-foot fall from the Strawberry Mansion Bridge. When I hit the brakes, the thing just kept on sliding the road. Motorist Vince Green managed to get out of his dangling automobile. He thought he had had another stroke of luck when a carload of men stopped and offered him a ride to a telephone. One guy, uh, shoved me really hard towards the ground and my pouch fell the one who was on the phone he came around and grabbed the pouch as i picked it up as while i was on the ground and he ran robert says the men then came back to the neighborhood to show off brian and stuff counting money up and all that in front of people yeah he went back the same night he loved us he just threw it for the fun of it robert says the attacker is a known neighborhood bully who flashes a gun and recruits others to help him do his dirty work. Anybody they see, you know, look like they got money. People getting out their cars and stuff. Robert says this bully has been robbing and beating up people for years and says now he's threatening to use his gun on the next person who runs away from him the way Vince Green did. Robert says he felt he had to come forward because no one else would. Scared. Scared they might get shot. Detectives tell KYW3 tonight Robert's information has helped. No word yet on if an arrest will be made soon. Joyce Evans, the news tonight. Violence inside and outside a convenience store it breaks out in the Logan section of Philly late tonight. Just about an hour ago, four people shot at 11th and Loudon. The scene utter chaos. Few details available. Police did track down a carload of people in front of a house not far away. Took them in for questioning. By the way, we know tonight one of the wounded was badly injured. A scary ride for a busload of passengers when their driver apparently suffered a heart attack at the wheel. Paramedics worked anxiously on the driver at 13th and Market in Center City, Philadelphia tonight. Police say after the driver became ill, the New Jersey Transit bus rear-ended a taxi. Apparently no one was hurt in the collision. The bus driver remains in critical condition. A critical vote brings the Civilian Police Review Board one big step closer to becoming reality in Philly. City Council gives it's okay. Supporters of the board cheer the 11 to 6 vote. Cops in the audience don't look happy. The board would consist of 13 members appointed by the mayor. They'd play an advisory role only. The very idea generates strong feelings on both sides. I think it's a win for the people of the city of Philadelphia. I think it demonstrates to them that not only are we concerned about the fiscal health of the city, but we're also concerned deeply about the social health of the city and the civil rights of our citizens. To have civilians judge you on a job that they don't know anything about. How can they judge you they don't know anything about the job? Mayor Rendell opposes the bill. He has until the first week in June to veto it. If he does, council can override that veto. But right now, it appears to be one vote short of an override. In the world tonight, wreckage found. Colombian authorities spotted the wreckage of a Boeing 727, one that crashed into a mountainside. The plane went down near the city of Medellin yesterday afternoon. None of the 125 passengers nor seven crew members on board survived. Investigators still don't know what caused that plane crash. New provocations in the skies over Iraq. The Pentagon says U.S. planes were fired on by Iraqi anti-aircraft batteries. The U.S. and other nations fly recognizance missions over northern and southern Iraq. 
The planes were fired on three times over southern Iraq. None were hit and they did not return fire. A plot to kill former President Bush in Kuwait last month reportedly was masterminded by Iraq. Sources say the FBI and Secret Service believe statements to that effect by Iraqis charged with the plot. Eleven Iraqis and five other suspects are under arrest there. In the nation tonight, a big to-do over the president's hairdo. Of all the cuts proposed by the White House, most controversial of all this evening, a $200 cut, a presidential haircut. It's a trim. KYW3 Stephanie Stahl reports that some say doesn't wash. It's a hair-raising week at the White House. First Hillary at Penn Monday with her new do. Now the president has his own trendy trim and a new controversy. On Tuesday, the president got a $200 haircut aboard Air Force One at Los Angeles International. The coif delayed two incoming flights. The cost for holding up the entire presidential entourage isn't available, but Republicans in Congress are wasting no time. You spent thousands of your tax dollars waiting to get a haircut for 200 bucks, bucks from Hillary's hairdresser. He ought to be more concerned about trimming the deficit than his own hair. Lance Haber is a leading Philadelphia consumer advocate. He's wasting people's time, he's wasting our money, and he's not helping to lead the government in the right direction. However, I think it's kind of ridiculous for the Republicans who have been doing this for centuries to be complaining. Of course, the White House is downplaying this whole haircut flap as a non-issue, something they say that the Republicans are unfairly trying to take advantage of. The president had to get his hair cut, as most people do. And if he wouldn't have been done there, he could have, I suppose, could have had it done uh, back at the hotel, but it wouldn't have made any difference. Much ado about nothing. Number Philadelphia one, City Councilman Joe Vignola is incensed. We're even talking about it. If he's got to get his hair cut on the fly, so be it. But it's not national news, and it's not something that should take literally hours of debate on the floor of Congress. It's exactly what the president doesn't need. His popularity is already falling, and he's in a feisty battle with Congress, the last thing he wants is Harrogate. Stephanie Stahl, The News Tonight. Cries of foul from a former game show producer who says what you see on Jeopardy is a scam. Harry Eisenberg worked for the popular game show until 1991. He says his bosses regularly change questions and categories to improve the chances for female contestants. Eisenberg makes this and other charges in a new book, Inside Jeopardy. Why did he wait until now to blow the whistle? For me to have gone forward at that time would have meant I would have been fired at once. Of course, they would have denied it and made me out to be some kind of a kook. Jeopardy! host Alex Trebek calls the allegations a sleazy attempt to promote a new book. Well, it's come and gone. Cheers, last call. The show you and millions of others across the nation watch tonight. What you didn't see was this vigil outside the Boston bar that inspired the hit TV series. Cheers rang out from the huge crowd every time one of the show's cast members appeared. Now, in just a few minutes, we'll take you there live with KYW3's Jick Sheeran. The show's over, but the celebration continues. Jen. All right, first place. Now it's time for First Weather. David Rogers is here, and that stubborn system is finally moving Getting out. Getting away, we're going to have a celebration of our own here in the Delaware Valley. The return of sunshine. Believe it, folks. Take a look at tomorrow morning's wake-up weather conditions. Heading out to work or school. Partly cloudy sky. 50 to 54 degrees. Might not be a bad idea to have lunch out tomorrow afternoon. Partly sunny. Afternoon highs getting up to about 68. And heading home tomorrow night, partly sunny. 64 to 68. Not a bad way to start the weekend. All of the weekend forecasts coming your way later on in the weather tonight. Bruce? Thank you, David. For first weather to first sports, Yuki and a little Inka Dinka Doo. Hey, cheers to the Phillies. Yes, indeed. The Phillies have started a big series with the Expos at Veterans Stadium, and it's imperative for the home team to come out swinging. How's this for fast starts? First inning, Pete Incavilla right, at the plate, and the bases are full. Watch this swing. It's a grand slam. Just like that, the Phillies start the game with a 4-0 lead. The Phillies went on to win 9-3 behind Curt Schilling. They moved to 6.5 up on Montreal in the National League East. More baseball, Jack Nicholas, and a lot more coming up later in the sports tonight. Good deal. Super, okay. thanks, Yuki. And stay with us on the news tonight. In just a few minutes, a cast of characters like none other. Okay, on this last call, you'll hear from the stars of Cheers on why they think you came to their bar. Oh, they like think of Ilya's Grand Slam <laughs> is what that was. But first, let's check tonight's winning lottery numbers. If you play, good luck. We'll be right back.
The 275th and final episode of nice Cheers, a show that will go down in television history. Not usually right now, we bring you the issue tonight. But since millions of you watched Cheers, we thought you might like to go to the real bar where everybody knows your name. KYW3's Dick Sheeran has been there for a big party in Boston all evening long. Cheers' last call is still serving. This is taking on the look of the Academy Awards ceremony. Thousands of Cheers fans have surrounded the Bull and Finch, the bar that inspired the legendary show, to say goodbye to their favorite neighborhood bar. Are you Sam? Yes, he's here. Good afternoon, everybody. Don't worry, boys. It's time for the old Tortelli Lucky Charm. Eddie, for you. Can I help you? That went right over my head. <laughs> America has had a regular seat at Cheers for 11 years. You could always find us at the bar on Thursday nights. They come here to be with their own kind. Cheers is just like everyday people. It deals with every type of situation and uh, basically decent people that have a slight problem with ties, maybe. The show doesn't make any demands on your intellect, yeah. quite frankly. <laughs> Give me your credit cards right now. There's no question that we've loved the show. The Cheers cast has also been fulfilled doing the show. Cheers has been an incredible ambassadorship, you know, to walk around in. You, it feels like a small town. When people see you and recognize Cheers, there's a smile, there's a warmth, there's a, I've shared a lot of laughs with you, kind of, nice feelings. Numerous times I've had people come up to me uh, in a bar or at the airport or something and, and just say thanks, thank you for making my life a little better on Thursday nights. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came You wanna be where you can see Our troubles are all the same I'll tell you, Bruce and Jen, this is an incredible sight. This party is still going very strong. This is the scene. On the third floor above this Bull and Finch pub, which inspired Cheers, you have the cast members who come to the, uh, they come to the window every once in a while, uh, almost like royal subjects to address several thousand people who have lined Beacon Street here on Beacon Hill outside the Bull and the Finch. It is an incredible sight. They cheer every time. The party just keeps going, and we'll continue on The Tonight Show. That's it live from Cheers Last Call. I'm Dick Shearer, and we'll go back to you in Philly. All right, and that tonight shows right after the news tonight. Yeah, and stay with us on the news tonight. Some cheery changes due on the five-day forecast. David Rogers has the details. Plus, like to take your chances on out-of-state lotteries. You better hurry because, well, something's going to change. We'll explain still ahead on the news tonight. For health tonight, a new study finds heavy drinkers and smokers at increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer. It's long been known that drinking and smoking can lead to swelling of the pancreas. Only now are researchers coming forth with the cancer warning. Advice from researchers, quit smoking and cut back on drinking to reduce the cancer risk. If you want to spend your money on out-of-state lotto tickets, better hurry. A new law soon bans the practice in the Keystone State. Pennsylvania Governor Bob Casey signed a bill outlawing that practice today. It goes into effect in 60 days. Casey says out-of-state sales sap millions of dollars a year from the Pennsylvania Lottery Fund. On to the weather. Yeah, my yeah. dog has been growing moss on the left side. So <laughs> I think the sun's going to be coming out. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's about time, right? It's yeah. great to be the bearer of finally some good news. All week we've been talking about a lot of cloud cover and everything else out there. That's breaking up and we're starting to see some nice clear sky. We'll take a look at a satellite image in a moment. First, let's check in with the current picture outside. A lot of clear sky now across the Delaware Valley. What a difference a few hours can make. Partly cloudy up at the Poconos. It's going to be a comfortable sleeping night. 47 at the Poconos, 58 here at Fifth and Market, just down 995, partly cloudy and 53 in the city of Wilmington. Thanks to some afternoon sunshine. Uh, temperatures topped out at about 62 today. We're currently at 55. Humidity normally gets a little high in the evening hours. Don't worry about it, 90%. Southerly wind at about 3, and the barometric pressure is rising. A stellar day. 
copper pollen or an allergy sufferers. Grass and tree pollen still very, very low. Mold spores even starting to come down a little bit, but with all the warm air that we're going to start to see, doctors over at the asthma center say, brace yourselves this weekend because these levels are going to start to slowly climb back up there. All right, let's take a look at this beautiful picture and just look at it for a minute. No rain to show, at least in our immediate area. Some showers and thunder showers off to the south. Some activity now moving away from us and all the beginning of some great weather we're going to see around here for the next couple of days. All right, let's go topside. Here's what's happening across the Delaware Valley. You can start to see the clouds even breaking up across the northeast. That's a good sign. The cold front that plagued us all week, acting as a highway for low pressure centers. That's now moving out into the Atlantic Ocean. We're starting to see a weak area of high pressure, but it's strong enough. It's going to build in and bring us a fair amount of sunshine tomorrow. We'll also see a lot of fair weather clouds around here as our day continues to progress. All right, for tomorrow, we're going to get off to a pretty decent start. Partly cloudy skies. Temperature is going to be very comfortable in the morning. You'll notice the humidity kind of low, but as the weekend starts to progress, things are really going to start to warm up for us, so get ready for temperatures finally reaching the 70-degree mark. All right, here we go. In detail, for the rest of the night tonight, we'll call it partly cloudy and comfy. 47 to 51 degrees north, northwest wind at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then for tomorrow, partly sunny, improving weather. Not a bad way to start the weekend. 64 to 68 degrees, winds out of the west, northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. There's your extended forecast. Saturday's looking good. Partly sunny, 72. Sunday, by and large, a nice one. We could see some showers Sunday night, 74. Thunderstorms on Monday and some more rain and 72 on Tuesday. That's a look at your weather tonight. Have a great day tomorrow. Jen, Bruce. Thank you, Thanks, David. David. Stay with us on the news tonight in sports. We'll take you to a very happy Phil's locker room. Plus, it's a dream matchup. Barkley against hey, Robinson with the game on the line. Yuki has the playoff survivor, plus all the scores and more in the sports tonight. I'm in up. Michael Jordan hitting the buzzer beater. The house Time for the sports tonight. Here again is Yuki Washington. And if the Phils have their way, they will widen their lead over the Expos. Tell me about it. They got out the gate fast tonight. Yeah, the Phillies are hoping to take at least three out of four against the Expos during this series. Tonight, they got off on the right foot with a grand start. And here's the grand man. First Rodgers. inning, Incavilla at the plate. He's up with the bases loaded. Oh, yeah, that's good for a grand slam. And Maggie Navholtz, the mom of Chris, who threw the pitch, wasn't in such a good mood. The Navholtz family from Pottsville. Kurt Schilling of the Phillies was working the rookie Frank Bullock in the fourth with two on. Gone. Just like that, Montreal trailed by one at four to three. The Phillies scored two more in the fourth. Inky back in the spotlight again. Key play here. There's a high throw. Scored an infield single and a run batted in. The Phils were up 6-3 at the time. Darren Dalton had a black eye tonight after sliding into a knee last night. He only needed one eye to look at this shot. A solo homer for Dalton to make it 7-3 Phillies. From the fifth inning on after a leadoff single, Schilling was just marvelous. He didn't allow a base runner. He went all the way. The Phillies moved to six and a half games over Montreal after winning tonight 9-3. Kurt was steady after giving up the homer. Darren started to push me after that inning and, and said, you know, come on, let's go. That's all they get. And, and you know, it's it just, it's just a, it, it's nothing different than hasn't happened here every day this year where somebody's picking somebody else up and our offense picked me up by going out and scoring two right after that. There you go. On the board, St. Louis over Chicago, 6-3 in the ninth inning. San Francisco, 6, Cincinnati, 1. And San Diego gets by Colorado, 5-4 is your score. Hey, the fans were paying homage at Camden Yards today. Here's why. McLemore going back, going back. He leaps and he makes the catch. This is how you rob a home run. The O's needed more offense, though. They lost to Cleveland, 3-1. Toronto gets by Boston 4-3 in the ninth, Kansas City leading Oakland 1-0. Also in the ninth, Seattle over Texas 7-4 and Detroit by 4 over Milwaukee 6-2 was the final. Barkley's boys were in Mr. Robinson's neighborhood tonight looking to close out their Western Conference semifinal series. Phoenix at San Antonio, the Suns had a 3-2 lead in the best of seven series going in. What a difference a year and a team makes for Charles Wade Barkley. Phoenix has the ball. Kevin Johnson and Barkley fake the pick and roll. 90-89, Phoenix up one. David Robinson was having a horrible night at the foul line. He made two, though, to tie it at 100 late in the game. The injured Antoine Gar was playing cheerleader on the sideline. Barkley would try and get Phoenix out of a jam. The pull-up jumper by Barkley falls. 
with 1.6 seconds. There you have it. That's the game winner. Charles Barkley had 28 points and 21 rebounds. 102-100 Phoenix. They are headed to the Western Conference Final. The Seattle Supersonics could close out the Houston Rockets tonight, but they have to do it in Texas. Seattle coach George Carl wants to get to that Western Conference Final too, but first he has to get by Houston. Seattle in green. Olajuwon with the block. Here come the Rockets. Smith way down in the corner, spotting up for the three-pointer, and he gets it. The game was tied at 54 points apiece in the third. On to the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Canadiens are looking for a 3-0 lead in the Wales Conference Final against the Islanders. This game went to overtime, tied at one goal apiece. The Canadiens have the puck at 12.34, the extra period. Guy Carboneau made it count. Montreal goes up three love in their series after a 2-1 victory tonight. And again, it's a... Well, Philly fighter Jesse Ferguson is talking trash. He says Bo has got to go. Ferguson will meet the heavyweight champ Saturday night in the nation's capital. Today, the weigh-in was the story. That's Jesse. He tipped the scales at 224 pounds. Champion Riddick Bo will come in from your right. Bo checked 20 pounds heavier than Jesse at 244. We talked with Jesse Ferguson about his chances against the champ. There's no pressure on me at all against the champion. Believe me, it's not. Because I'm not expected to win anyway. So if I, why not go for it? You know, like Rocket said, go for it. And that's, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for it. This ain't the movies, Jesse. Good luck. <laughs> One last look in the sports tonight at the Golden Bear. Jack Nicholas is in the area for the Senior Store Bell Atlantic Classic at Chester Valley. Pro-Am play in the rain today. In between drops, Nicholas talked about why he decided to play here. I sort of looked at the schedule, and uh, really I only had an opportunity for a couple of weeks in between uh, the PGA Seniors and the Memorial Tournament that I could pick an event. And, and I really felt like it was too long a time off, and I just wanted to play some golf. And uh, everybody told me that uh, the golf course here at Chester Valley was a good golf course and one that I'd like. And I said, okay, then I'll go play. He'll go play. Trevino will go play. Palmer. Everybody's going to be a good tournament. All right, All you're right, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Stay with us in the news tonight. When we return, we'll go to a Cheers party. Cheers! Who's your favorite Cheers character? Watch our last word and see if you agree. Last word tonight, of course, it's cheers. Cheers and the parties to mark the end of the Landmark Series. In Kensington, regulars head out to the Cheers Cafe for the last call on their favorite show. And at Center City's oldest bar, McGillan's Old Ale House, fans toast the end of an era, and everybody has a favorite Cheers regular. I like Norm. He's just lovable. Norm, because my man, he just... He's an everyday working guy. He never works, but he's, he's always there. Sam's my favorite character. Yeah, definitely Woody. Well, he's just such a simple soul, but a lot of truth in what he has to say a lot of times. It's probably Carla, because she's like this little spitball. Diane, because that's what everybody here calls me. The people are just like regular people, not like the stiffs on the, you know, Knots Landing and Young and the Restless. Of course, you can still watch Cheers and reruns. Reruns expected to air well into the next century. And that's the news tonight. News continues tomorrow with Newsday at 6. For now, we're out of time. You're up to date. Have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. Bye-bye.